to treatment back to surgical. Hi, I'm Vedenu, I'm a body surgery in Mac Theater Labs, and this is Robin. Uh, we work in the back row of this Mac Theater, and we are virus researchers, which means we look at viruses for the living. We are part of the global Mac Theater Labs, and fortunately, the projector is not able to show the world map because of contrast reasons. Um, so you can see that McAfee, the RP division of McAfee is called McAfee Labs. You have seen a video before this. Um, we, we employ the follow the sun model, which means we start off with Japan, China, Singapore, and by Europe, looking at the Asia region. And then in our evening, we hand over whatever backlog we have, or whatever we have seen, to the Europe region. And Europe, in turn, forwards it to America when they're done with their ship, and so forth. The advantage of this model is no matter what time of the day or night a threat comes out, somebody in the lab is always awake and working on the threat. You should also understand that McAfee started out as an AV company 20 years back. We are now the number one security provider, pure security provider. It's no more about just AV. We are into web reputation, infusion prevention at the host and network level. We are into vulnerability research, patch management, uh, Palmstone is into consulting, so you name it in security, and McAfee's do. And me and Rahul have been based in Bangalore for the last five years. We have had the opportunity to look at how threats have evolved in the Asia region. More importantly, we've been able to see you know, how threats have evolved in India. And Clubhack is a fantastic opportunity to showcase our research about threats that attack India. Our, our agenda is going to be kind of, you know, knowing the enemy, who is attacking at India's front door. We're also going to look how India has evolved into the information age. We're going to visit the World Wide Web, rather we call it the World Wide Web. It's not so safe anymore to go online. We're also going to look at India's contribution to spam, botnets, and DOS attacks. We'll also look at some regional malware, traces that Indian writers have been writing viruses. And we look at some very specific targeted attacks and what the future holds for us. To start off with, these are the stats from India's growing cyber population. India is, has around 81 million users, you know, and this is only growing. 81 million may not sound a big number, but when you think India has a 1 million population and more, 81 percent just 81 million dollars just constitutes 7 percent of the user base. So even a 1 percent increase, you know, is around 10 million users. And by the end of Q4, we are all set to overtake Japan. Given that we have such a large and growing user base, why do we Indians go online? According to statistics, these are the most popular domains and sites that Indians visit. We spend the most time on matrimony sites for obvious reasons, because it's very time checking our profile, reading, replying, and so forth, followed by uh, downloading and file sharing, job sites, entertainment, etc. And we look at and when we look at Google Trends, you will see that this kind of reflects, you know, why Indians go online. For people in the back, back in case you can't see, you will see that the top search terms historically have been songs, videos, cricket, and you know the usual email. And on the right side, you have rising search in, rising searches. You see India versus Sri Lanka. There's a cricket series going on, so that is the top search you know, keyword that comes out of India. You also see movies here, past 2012. So those, what you see on your right side is seasonal. You know, as when things happen. Now, how does this, you know, be of interest to a malware or As an attacker, what attackers are doing is. They are poisoning search engine results. They would, whenever users search for popular keywords or breaking news, they would poison the search engine results so that along with less rich sites, you also have a lot of bad sites that come up. And it's very difficult to differentiate between the good and the bad site. People are searching for cricket or the celebrity, or you know, searching for Michael Jackson's death video, the last video before he died, uh, could end up in a bad site. To give you an example of how this works, what I have here is, these are live demos, so please forgive me if the malware, you know, forgive, doesn't perform as intended. It's always tricky here. Uh, what I have with me here is a list of thousands, thousand websites which I just pulled up from my keyboard. I just 
sua grande amplifica e in un'altra l'ultima cosa e questo è per dimostrare quanto difficile è per differenziare tra un buon e un buon sito e per dimostrare quanto difficile è per dimostrare quanto difficile è per dimostrare quanto difficile è Oops. When you're giving a demo, every second key is like a minute, you know? Uh, this site doesn't seem responsive, we speak it. Some other site. I don't believe. Oh, yeah, Mr. Karpi, that can be gone. Sorry. We timed up. We are going to the end here. For the internet to work. 8, 6, 5, 7, 3. So, any guesses internationally what will be the top selling you know, keyword, what people are searching for past one week? Which is the biggest scandal which happened in the last one week? Tiger Woods. absolutely. You make a good voice. <laughs> right. And for the next three weeks, it's going to be. Uh, the next three weeks are finally going to be centered around Christmas, uh, New Year, you know. So, alright. Let's come. Just check in if it works. Okay, if it works. Now I'm going to the site again. So, say for example, uh, a user went online searching for you know, Christmas shopping, a Christmas greeting card to send to you know, his loved ones. Uh, chances are he would end up at a site like this, where there's a picture of a cute baby dressed in a Santa Claus costume. And a familiar video saying, you know, a video posted by Santa Claus, do you want to you know, view it? And, and it gives the Nintendo Wii Flash Play a game. You need this particular update in order to you know, view the video. Um, I'm going to say install. Would that, because that would be the first thing a lot of users do. And you have set up. Most users would do run. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. You would think this is a codec file, right? And now it uses clever social engineering. You can look at the icon. This is a Windows update icon. I'm just going to look at properties. Yeah. So uh, it says Adobe Flash. It has a Windows icon, but is actually you know pertaining to be a narrow utility. Narrow makes you know CD writing software. Um, let me load you know this file. I am going to load this file into a VMware image. And let's execute and see what happens. Now this is interesting. We need to know this. It, file has disappeared. Give it a moment to do its thing. So if you have one, one of those unfortunate users who was quick into downloading this file and executing it, in like around 40 seconds, you will see what the payload is. There is some network activity happening here. And what what this particular worm has done is it has locked your machine. You cannot do anything. It's asking you to solve the capture, and only if you solve the capture, you have access to the machine again. This is a classic case of the, of holding your machine to ransom. If I enter the wrong, I need to say the wrong capture. I would actually have to solve it. Ava. For me to gain control of the machine again. And every couple of minutes, it would repeat it to the user. So, that has been sorted for the registry? Can I get a plan for the registry for the setup on the AC? See, it could either start via the registry, it could start via an IMI file, it could infect. Because if it's the first sorted for the registry, it would be a start up program. So we can just check it and just look at the, uh, I can do all of that. So for a tech, tech side person like you and me, we can do it. 
think about if your mom got infected. And you know, if a normal music got infected, um, they would end up solving captchas for a work. Google, Yahoo and other sites have made it more difficult for automated bots to solve captchas. So how do attackers solve this problem? Make humans do it. You can either outsource it to Bangladesh or infect people and ask them to enter, you know, solve the capture in order to get that control of the system. Now in this case, the payload was just solving captures. Um, the other common payloads are installing a rogue security software, saying your machine is infected, you need to buy it. Or in more extreme cases, they would, you know, display pornography and, and people, you know, in, in, in fright would, you know, register or pay in order to get rid of pornographic acid. We also had a very rare case where child pornography was displayed on computer, forcing the, the user to panic and buy something. Coming back to our preso, because now you would be able to relate better to what this video box you know, looks like. And the next time you see it on the net, whenever you want to view a video, just think about this presentation. Searching for Indian celebs and cricketers also can get you into trouble. This is again not an India specific problem. You can search for Hollywood celebs, uh, wallpapers, pictures, you know, videos can get into trouble. Uh, the race for the most dangerous celeb usually alternates between Aishwarya Rai and Katrina Kaif. Another method of infecting users for people who don't search, for people you know who don't look in history. So, there are users who go to the same site day in day out. Okay. Even those categories of users can get infected. We've seen instances where popular portals, banks, government sites, educational institutions, you know, pretty much every category of site has got infected to serve malware. In this example, we see you know, the Times of India site, a very popular Indian portal, which was infected to serve malware. Bank of India has been hacked. Indian embassies have been hacked. The Ministry of External Affairs has been repeatedly hacked their website to serve malware. So is the Union Public Service Commission. Most people going to the site in order to register you know, would, would get infected by a by, by download. Even you know, a small Indian antivirus company was at the receiving end. Instead of serving virus signatures, they were serving viruses. Again, no fault of this. And so, was, you know, these are just examples which came out in the news. Uh, you should understand this is a small percentage of, you know, uh, of incidents which become public. Most times, when, it, when an internal hack happens, people do not go to the public because the company, you know, gets a hit in terms of reputation and customer confidence. To summarize, we can see that, you know, the risks on the web are constantly changing, the site are safe today, there's no guarantee it's safe in a couple of hours from now, um, and it's very difficult for your layman consumer to differentiate between a good and a bad site. Thousands of websites are getting infected every day, legitimate websites. The, the, the primary methods used are either blind SQL injection, uh, FTP about compromise, or, you know, just as something as simple as our poisoning. And we've seen that a lot of 5 to 5 Indian sites have been compromised to serve malware. We'll also look at the kind of payloads that we've installed. In the previous example, we saw uh, a capture breaking program was installed on the computer which held a ransom. Um, typically, what happens is when a user gets infected, uh, they would run a password stealing trojan, which would try to harvest all your cache, i.e., and Firefox passwords. In case you were a smart type and did not, you know, Cache passwords in your browser, they would run a keylogger, which would then log every keystroke that you type whenever you visit banking sites or social networking sites and so forth. In order for, for the attacker to get back to your machine and then use it 